So do you think you're a rebel? Are you maybe part of the modern rebellion in the West? Well, if you are watching this video, there's actually a good chance that you might be. But what is a modern political rebellion in America? I mean, what does it actually look like? What makes you a rebel in today's world? Well, I hope to discuss this topic, one that has actually interested me for decades now. I mean, I remember having this exact discussion when I was a conservative college activist back in my Columbia College days. But more people are waking up to the political chaos and the failures all around us. So this is something that in tumultuous kind of political times like those that we live in today, well, I believe this is actually a good time to discuss this topic and see what you think. I mean, if you think I've missed something, I'm wrong, and maybe a bit crazy or just missing the point, let me know in the comment section down below. Which, as always, if you like this video, please don't forget to hit the like button, share it with others, and of course, hit the subscribe button down below. I know it seems minor and it's probably a distraction at times, but it does help others see the videos and help them like this one that are mainly our political elite certainly don't want you to see. In fact, doing so is probably a bit rebellious itself, at least from their perspective. So it won't entirely reverse the impact of the shadow banning that's imposed on this channel by YouTube and their political directors, but it helps it kind of in a small way just get the word out there. And also you can really go below in the video description if you wanna financially support our efforts or subscribe to my email newsletter. I'm basically a charity case surviving on the support of you and others just like you who enjoy my messages and efforts at exposing the truth, training activists to be more effective, and generally annoying the political elite. I mean, someone has to do it, and we'd probably be better off if there were certainly more of us out there. So now back to the rebellion and our attempt to see if you are actually part of it. Now, first of all, rebellion is often defined as kind of this open resistance to a government or ruler. Sometimes it infers violence in, as it basically did in the American Revolution, uh, that kind of founded our nation, and that was clearly a violent time. But it also is often used to refer to those who resisted tyranny or abusive government policies, like maybe those who pushed back against communists in Eastern Europe, or perhaps Jim Crow laws in the Democrat Party-run southern states. And if you were pushing for the abolition of slavery in the early 19th century, and in particular, if you were involved in founding the Republican Party in the 1850s, you were most certainly in rebellion against the orthodoxy at the time. An abolitionist from that era was not just fighting against this clear evil of slavery in the South, but also against the federal government for its apathy and acceptance of a very clear evil. But we are entering the third decade of the 21st century, and what makes you part of today's rebellion, uh, assuming that you are rebelling against anything? Maybe you aren't, and you're actually a big fan of this guy. Now, I'm often referred to as a conservative activist, and in many of my presentations around the state of Washington and elsewhere, I tell people that I'm an evangelist for liberty and freedom. In today's woke world, those apparently are radical concepts clearly opposed by most of our government's policies and certainly scary to the political elite who abuse us today. So if you believe in liberty and freedom or most ideas associated with a conservative political perspective, you are very scary and clearly a rebel, just like me. But those are all words that mean different things to different people. Sometimes, so let's just kind of get a bit of a perspective. If you believe in freedom of speech, for example, you are absolutely a rebel and a scary one at that. Almost none of our current political elite believe in your free speech rights anymore. Not in the classical sense of this concept anyway. This is almost exclusively kind of a lefty phenomenon today, the suppression of free speech and all dissenting thought. And let's face it, these are the guys who have control over the state, the bureaucracy, big tech, and most big corporations, and certainly big education. So if you resist their groupthink, tyranny, and kind of their desire to absorb you into the Borg groupthink mindset that dominates college campuses today, for example, and of course the tech bros that we know, well, you're clearly a rebel, probably a racist and certainly evil. So they fear you and they must suppress you. They have to mock you, they need to silence you, and they certainly must shadow ban you. And we've seen this movement really quite a while now, several decades. So you're only really allowed to believe in politically correct things and all else is verboten and will result in your excommunication from the wine and cheese crowd events. And certainly modern cancel culture is kind of a big part of this process. 
And in case you haven't realized this already, whatever is politically correct today can quickly become racist, evil, and a threat to the state. So it's always changing all the time. So you need to keep up with the cool kids just to keep on their good side. Maybe you believe in math. I mean, you actually believe it's real and that it isn't racist. Obviously, that makes you a rebel today, and you are certainly not allowed to work in any senior capacity of government. Plus, if you believe math is real, you are absolutely probably a racist, of course. So our political elite now, they even want you to believe that inflation is fake and somehow a right-wing, whatever that means, talking point. So do you believe in equality? All men are created equal. Admittedly, that is actually a very radical concept and kind of the breadth and the wider perspective of human history. And in fact, it was probably one of the most radical statements made by Thomas Jefferson when he drafted our Declaration of Independence so long ago. However, if you actually believe that today, according to groups who are sponsored by our political elite like Indivisible and others, if you say you believe in equality today and you're running for a school board position, for example, you're evil and you must be destroyed by them. So clearly, that makes you a rebel. Our political elite and college glitterati, they basically have replaced equality with equity, which really means something else entirely. So do you believe that maybe government isn't always the solution? Do you believe that you can spend your own money better than the state? And maybe you're concerned just about government corruption, incompetence, and abuse. Well, that makes you a rebel today for sure, and you are most certainly a threat to the state and our ruling elite right now. They're all convinced that they know better than you and that they can rule, and indeed they must rule, every aspect of your life. Maybe are you insane enough to actually believe in the immutable nature of bi biology and believe that there's such a thing as men or women? Obviously, you are a radical danger to everyone on this planet, and you should be imprisoned, canceled, and probably destroyed. Just because humanity has always known this since the dawn of time, that doesn't mean our current political entertainment class doesn't know better than everyone else suddenly. And certainly that includes you, you evil rebel. Now, do you believe in the right to defend yourself? Maybe you don't want to be a victim. And certainly if you do believe in that right to defend yourself, you are certainly a scary person who shouldn't be allowed to exist in modern society today. You are definitely a scary rebel. Maybe you want to study history, the good and the bad, and perhaps you question the bias of media. Maybe you want to think for yourself. Well, that certainly makes you dangerous insurrectionist rebel today. Maybe you want violent criminals in jail, but you want to reduce the crime against bureaucracy that proliferates our legal code today. Well, that certainly makes you a rebel for sure, and you're probably a racist homophobe to boot. So at any time, have you ever questioned authority? or experienced negative thoughts about our political elite, or wondered why maybe big tech is just so focused on total censorship. Yes, you are clearly dangerous. You're a big threat, and you are certainly part of the rebellion. Now, on the other hand, uh, perhaps you love watching MSNBC. You believe everything that you're told by the New York Times, NPR, or the Biden administration. Then you are most certainly not a rebel. And you won't like those of us who don't buy the dominant narrative that are pushed by the political insiders today. Now, maybe that crazy professor in college has you believing his theories and you're unconcerned that your kids can't do math or largely illiterate, except, of course, when it comes to pronouns. And you can't find, they can't find our country on a map. But you think public education is so awesome. Well, you're not a rebel and I'm sure the government will take care of you. People like this guy right here are certainly your leaders. Now, frankly, if you are still watching this video and the algorithms haven't taken it down yet, then you might very well be part of the rebellion. But what does that actually mean? It is a good question. Independent thinkers and those who question authority often feel very alone and isolated. As our political elite, they definitely want you to think that. They also want you to feel helpless, powerless, and hopeless. They love that, actually, because it makes them feel happy when you feel this way. But what can you actually do today once you realize that you're a rebel in your own land? Well, first, you don't go out and you burn down your cities and have mostly peaceful, violent riots. You don't launch a secession movement like Chaz Chop in Seattle a few years ago. And you don't hide away and hope the world doesn't notice. You don't sit back and assume someone else has a plan. Trust the plan. Nope, sorry, nobody has a plan to save you. None of those actions will work, and it's pretty clear to me that those in charge would love it if you did any one of those things. 
No, instead, let me close with what I believe is a better mindset for the modern rebel in America today. You can take steps now, actually, to let your rebellion have a practical and useful impact for you, your family, and your community today. Now, first, I think you have to be practical. You need to think globally, but act locally. And listen, I live about 3,000 miles away from Washington, D.C. My individual ability to directly influence what happens back in that kind of cesspool of corruption is actually pretty limited. Pay attention to them, but throwing stuff at your screen, getting worked up about every new drama and scandal from D.C. really won't change things much at all where you live. No, I actually strongly recommend working for the change that you want to see, for the fixes that you want to see, for the freedom, liberty, and reform that you want to see locally in your city, in your community, in your neighborhood, in your local school maybe, in your state where you can actually make a much more tangible, measurable difference if you just try. Now for clarification, you won't have an impact if you don't do anything. You won't have a positive impact at all if you do nothing but attack allies and friends trying to make a positive impact in your community. You will only impress yourself if you don't vote. And that's like anyone cares about your virtue signaling, temper tantrum. That only rewards the worst in our society. Now, don't get me wrong. I know far better than most the problems that we have created in our voting system today. But you not voting is really not a solution. It's not a protest, and it's certainly not a rebellion. It's just a child's tantrum with no benefit. Now, finally, don't trust those who try to incite others to be violent. I believe almost every person doing this today is a fake and a provocateur. There's a clear difference to people based in reality between civil disobedience, free speech, and activism, and what we actually saw the left do a few years ago, violence in the streets. And if you want to be constructive, find ways to make an impact that do not involve violence. If you do this, you will most certainly become the real threat against government overreach and abuse. Now, secondly, you're not alone, and you need to realize this, because I think social media today is kind of this ugly thing in many ways, because it can be isolating and it can create an unrealistic idea of what is happening around you. People who live all day on social media are actually missing something tangible happening around them. And don't get me wrong, I mean, depending on how much big tech silences, manipulates, or distracts you, there are a lot of good and effective ways that you can reach others using modern social media tools, but you have to meet people, I think, face-to-face -to, -face to better understand others and to develop effective and productive relationships. Uh, many people watching this video are probably thinking, I'm a hypocrite, right? Because here I am doing a video. But actually, I spend the majority of my time not doing videos like this. Usually, I'm meeting people, uh, talking to whistleblowers, maybe making presentations, or helping to train activists. And I recommend having a healthy balance of using the tools provided by social media and kind of other ways of communicating, but also don't forgo the chance to meet others, particularly where you live, because your neighbors, your local contacts, your family, your real support network of like-minded people will probably keep you better engaged than a bunch of posts on Facebook. Now, finally, I always say, try to find a project that you can work on. And I really can't define that project for you. Only you can do this. I can make suggestions on how to find it, but you will have to probably make that choice yourself. Maybe you can do more than one, but if you have not engaged, pick something that you want to work on. Maybe just setting up a block watch in your community. Maybe neighbors just helping neighbors. Perhaps you want to report on crime stats in your community to kind of help people be more aware. Perhaps your local school is your focus. Start going to school board meetings and study the budget and the curriculum. Maybe you want to help organize a banned book club in your community, and you can help people read dangerous works like the Constitution, Federalist Papers, Road to Serfdom, Atlas Shrugged, Dinesh D'Souza, or if you are really rebellious, maybe the Bible. Now, I don't know, but it has to be something that you actually care about. Because often when I'm out training activists, they want me to tell them what to do. And I have suggestions, and I think I can help sometimes, but it's my specific suggestions. If they don't actually match the skill set or their interests, or basically they basically won't be doing anything. They're just going to need something else. So you, as the person watching this video, deciding what you want to do, you're going to be far more successful doing something that matters to you and which you are actually passionate about. And that way you can actually make a bigger impact.
So if you're while still watching this video right now, I'm almost certain that you're probably part of the rebellion. If nothing else, I've triggered everybody else so far who so badly that they've already checked out, they've hit the thumb down button, and they've reported me to Big Brother Big Tech for wrong think. So welcome to the rebellion. And let's get started. It isn't easy, and it isn't for the weak, and the future is absolutely never certain. But it is far better than just surrender, and we might make a much bigger impact than you realize. Now, in closing, just in summary here, act locally. You gotta start somewhere. Number two, find local friends and allies. You can't do this alone, you need friends. Number three, pick your project, whatever it might be, whatever your passion is. And remember, the future is only gonna belong to those who show up, not to those who run away.